to our sixth um, uh, river, uh, river talk, or penultimate one, however you want to look at it. One more left after this. Um, tonight, it's, uh, I know, the, next, the next one, maybe we may have to change since the person giving it uh, is undergoing hip surgery, so he may not be able to get there to do that. But we will have something for that at the end of April. Uh, tonight, our uh, river talk is on the uh, on the salmon uh, the salmon air nature uh, salmon air salmon air salmon air river by Chris Kelly. Chris is a board member of the uh, Salmon Association of Eastern Newfoundland. The idea for uh, the event, if you've been around long enough, you know that river talks were once a staple of a uh, thing, and it was brought up at a meeting wow. back in the fall that we should look at re uh, instituting them, especially where it's the international year of salmon. So we put together a rather ambitious uh, series of seven, uh, three on the, we've had on the on fishing nymph, uh, on the fishing the Gander River, that is on the salmon air, uh, river. We've also had scientific talks on uh, student grad talks, uh, uh, research done in the sand, uh, bio, uh, uh, data tagging and uh, data logging, as well as uh, obstructions on the Placentia Bay, rivers in the Placentia Bay area. So we've had quite a, an eclectic uh, uh, group of talks. Uh, it's free, it's open to everyone. Um, it's a good way to promote uh, conservation, good way to promote an interest in salmon angling. Uh, so since we're not charging you, we will be selling tickets on a dozen of hand-tied flies by Ian Gall, and Ian swears they work. Of course, the more I keep saying that with that tone of voice, the less chances I have of getting anywhere with Ian than really is the interest. All I can tell you is that Ian does catch a lot of fish. At least that's what he tells me. Like <laughs> I've never been, I, any time I've been with him, I'm either the jinx or whatever, but I've never seen him catch a fish. Well, I won. <laughs> anyway, good sport. Uh, great bunch of people on the uh, same on the same board of directors, uh, and uh, we could use your support. So I will be selling tickets on flies, a dollar each, and they'll be drawn for at the end of the night, a dollar each for an even better deal at 10 for $10. Okay? Also, May 4th is fast approaching, and why should that date mean anything? It's the uh, annual dinner and auction. So if you haven't, uh, if you are thinking about going and you haven't bought your tickets, Ian is here to take the tickets, uh, to take your money and give you a ticket. Uh, so that's May 4th, uh, less than a month away. So if you use your support of that. Also, uh, we give a little bit of a shout out to, and you may, you may or may not already know this, but, uh, the uh, uh, the Exidy Vitty Brewery Outfitter Outfitter Pros. Okay, they have a fly tying um, uh, evening. Uh, I think they have two left down at the Exidy Vitty Brewery uh, every month. One left. One, one left. So, well, anyway, still go down to drink if you want. But that's good <laughs> evening. Uh, great uh, venue and an opportunity to uh, meet other fly tires and uh, people interested in nailing and, and the like. So I can't think of anything else to say. What we will do right now uh, is uh, to get uh, uh, Chris to start off, and uh, one or two things are going to happen. We're going to break, maybe in about oh, half an hour at the most, half an hour or so, and uh, and we we'll let you ask Chris uh, some questions, and then we'll take a part two, or he's going to get through it all, and you're going to have more time for questions than drinking. At the break, there will be food out there and uh, some beer. The bar is open. The Fluverian has been kind enough to give us a space for these river talks free of charge. So, you know, if you want to help them out, buy a beer or buy a water or buy whatever you want there. Uh, the food is free. Um, Chris has told me that he has had several uh, anonymous threats uh, on, his, uh, on his person uh, because of what he's about to, uh, the secrets he's about to unfold. So, we're asking for your cooperation. Uh, Rick? Okay, you're going to be fine, though, right? Yeah, when I walked in, I, I was like, uh, <laughs> I, I think to myself, when there's three types of people here, it's people that don't know the river, that know the river, that don't know how to fish, and, and then there's people here to feed me. So. And then, I know, and then there's Rick. <laughs> and there's Rick. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm talking about. And Victor just walked in, too, so I'm not sure you're going to 
Okay, folks, take care, enjoy, and uh, so if you have a Twitter account or a Facebook account, by all means, take pictures and, and, and publicize it. It's uh, the year of the salmon, after all. Yeah, let's do that. Take care. Okay. What do you have, folks? We're <laughs> here. River Talk. Let's get started. Fun. Well, I went, um, I went this past weekend and I uh, figured I'd get some pictures. So the pictures are going to be mostly with snow in the background, but it's new from that. Last year when we went to Big Falls, it was snowing again. So you never know what the river's going to like, look like at any given time, but um, this was taken on the lower part of the river. The flats. That's okay. So it's a bit about me. So I started fishing probably about 15 years ago. My very first um, river was the salmon air. Didn't have a clue where it was at. Went down and bought a, uh, a rod from Ocean down a Blue Charm and paid 60 bucks for it. Went down on the uh, Salmon Air River and I was fishing between the flats and, um, and Sandy Point. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Walking down the middle of the river, fishing in about six inches of water, hoping I was going to catch the salmon. Then I, uh, I, I started asking a few questions and um, I was told to, uh, to go down to the flats. So I, that was the very first spot that I went. I um, ended up meeting, actually, it's a good friend of mine now. And he, uh, he gave me a few tips. And that day he passed me Patty Francis. I didn't even know what Patty Francis was before I put it on the spot. But I gotta say, it kind of changed my life. Um, I was, I think it was my fourth time out, and I ended up hooking two fish that day on that same fish, a little bit of guidance from him on the flat, actually right here in this room, which is not really the same as it used to be. So all the way down, really, used to hold fish, but I found that ever since Igor hit, it's almost like this pool right here is not quite as deep, they're not holding there the same. Not, it's like, on the first one, you still need the fish coming through, but before it's almost like the fish were staying there a bit more. I think now maybe the fish are just going right through the whole river and they're kind of stopping at, at Butler's and and, uh, and Pinson's first. But before I get ahead of myself, this is there. So, yeah, so like I said, I've been fishing for about 15 years. Um, I've been involved with staying now for about five years and uh, try to get as much time away as I can. I got three kids and I used to work two jobs, but uh, it, was, it was always hard, but fishing was always my, my true passion. So yeah, this was this past summer on uh, Southwest Brook, just up in Seal Pool. I uh, hooked into a nice grill, nice picture with the mountains in the background. But, let's talk about salmon air. So, like I said, so these are some of the common flies that I use on the, on the uh, on the salmon air. So Penny Francis, I use mostly the blue with purple, natural green, anything really works. Uh, then the brown bulbs, small brown bulbs, smaller the better. That, that's the one thing with salmon air. A lot of people come up and they're using way too big flies. So I find nice small flies, I usually use number 12 to be honest with you. Um, some people use 10, but it's dependent on the water. So the higher the water, you want to change the flies. But give you a bit of perspective of the, the size of the fly that I use, like this is, this is the padded Francis that I use, so that's how small it is. That came right out of my feet. I use on, on the, uh, on the salmon. So it's small. And a lot of people are coming out with, with big flies and not having much success, but I use, I use the uh, penny most of the time, and then I use a bit of brown ball, especially off like Murphy, that area, and there's one spot on Viper Road, I'll show you, but I use a, a bulk there, very effective. Um, then, I'm not really much for like true wet flies, but anything really works there, like a, uh, the Salmon Air Special. I don't have a picture of the Salmon Air Special, but Salmon Air Special, White Wing, uh, Thunder Lightning, Blue Charm. But the key is to have a small fly. Yeah, so yeah, the Sandler Special. A lot of people um, haven't used the Sandler Special for a while, I guess. It was uh, originally called the Snipe. I think it was by Rick Parsons. I think it, it was originally caught with the hair from his dog, actually. 
and then it kind of tied on, and people have been using it now uh, on the river for. I don't know, Rick, do you know when it was first invented? It was actually two different slides, but they're quite similar. Oh, okay, yeah, and they, they came out at yeah, the same moment. Um, and then, yeah, I used, uh, well, it's still, still with it, and top spoons, small top spoons work for it as well. Um, so, yeah, this, you can see here the, um, the uh, patties over on this side, and then the bulk that I, well, I think, yeah, the bulk that I used just up at the top there. And then I also used ones that are probably just different than that, but I'm not allowed to tell that secret. <laughs> <laughs> But they're very similar. And then the uh, the thumb and oil there on the bottom as well. I don't have a picture of the uh, salmon special, but I do have one in the box here if anybody wanted to see it. A few helpful hints up on uh, smaller smaller flies, so like I was saying, generally I'll use uh, 10, probably more 12s on the river. Another thing about the uh, about the salmon area is, is, is casting with your left hand. A lot of people kind of laugh at that and but it, it, it is true. Like one, once I started casting with my left hand, because primarily when you're when you're fishing that water, water, you're on you're on the right hand side, so you're casting with your left hand. And what what's happening when you are casting? If you're casting with your your right hand, your the the water is taking that taking your uh, your um, fly line and whipping in front of the fish, and they can't see it. So. When you have a different angle on your on your on your um, line and on your rod, you can almost get it in front of the fish for longer. So that's one one key thing, especially when you're fishing a smaller river like uh, like the salmon here. And then mainly, so that's another thing. A lot of people are just even if they are casting with their with their left hand, just make sure that you're mending it. Even that last like that one second that is over the fish. Is going to make a big difference if you hook more fish on that river. And like I, I didn't ever really, I, I've always heard people say, oh yeah, like that's a load. Like <laughs> I, I fished that for for years. And but it's true. As soon as I started casting with my my left hand and mending that fly and having it sitting over the fish for longer, I hooked way more fish. Like mm -hmm. probably tenfold in in, in one uh, in one year. Another thing about salmon here, why we're so a lot of fishing pressure, and it is true. I know in my early years, I went to uh, I walked, didn't have a clue where I was going, but I left I left the um, I left Governor's and walked up to Pinson's, and I got up to Pinson's. It was probably three o'clock, and I was like, oh perfect, nobody here, it's deadly, and the sun started coming up, and I see a cigarette up on. Fly rods, everybody was flicking. I was like, what's going on, man? I'm sure like, there's nobody else can possibly here. We ended up probably like 40 other people there that day. So quicker, quicker you can get in there and get your spot, it does work. But it's not necessarily uh, when you're going to hook the most fish. Then uh, yeah, your prime run on the uh, salmon air finds usually actually when I'm on the west coast. <laughs> but uh, usually the first week of July. We're always out there, uh, big balls, herring, and everybody catching all these fish and making me depressed. But we're not catching any of big balls. Then the first uh, first run of fish are usually uh... Can you still hear me without that? You still got it on, so oh, it's good. No, that's good. Okay. Um, so usually the first run of fish in the in salmon air are. Um, are a bit smaller, and the bigger ones tend to come in uh, a bit later. But uh, like, I find a lot of people think that salmon air has all small fish, but it's, it, it's not true. There's, there's lots of big fish in salmon air. It's just this one brought me out of my head. Uh, there you go. So can everybody still hear me back there? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, there is still um, larger fish in, in uh, on master catching. Oh, on master catching, there's a good few big fish. In the every one I, I try to tag is it's probably about four or five pounds, but um, definitely it, it does get smaller on fish at first. Then uh, six to eight weight rods, I usually use probably a six weight rod on the river, but um, six weight rods, some people even use five weight, 
It's um, it's a smaller it's a smaller um, smaller river, so you're going to want to get a, a smaller rod and also a line that's that's going to be good for roll casting. And then again, you don't really need waders on the on the river, but um, they obviously do uh, do help when you're uh, trying to get to some spots. And then, uh, yeah, like I said there, if you're really ambitious, you learn the salmon or squirrel. And I can't go any further than that, but that uh, salmon or squirrel on your left hand, you got a good chance of getting a fish. So, I'm going to start down on the flats. So you can kind of see here on this map, it might be a bit hard to see, but like this is cool if anybody's looking, and then up here, you're going to be tapping, that's going to be the uh, golf course. But the flats actually is even on this way here. But yeah, the flats are down below, then like Sand Point, Back River, then you're going to be getting into Flipper um, or Flipper Road, and then all the way up you're going to be getting into uh, to the Governor. So I'm going to be talking about from down on the, um, the flats and off. So right here, we're down what I call the old bridge. That's kind of your first spot where you're going to be able to fish. To be honest, I fished a couple of ponds, haven't had much luck. I find them really hard to uh, really hard to fish down there, They're really hard to hook. They're uh, too much straight out of the salt water. But um, when you are there, so there's a couple of different fishes. So a lot of people are fishing up on the point there, down across, down to this water. And then they're also, if you go over on the bridge and look down, you're also going to Sometimes see fish pulling up in a few little pockets on the other side. Um, and again, I'm not seeing people fish from either side of the river, just on the other side of this bridge here. And I've never seen anything hooked there. But people have. Yeah. Is that the common term for the old bridge? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, it's it's not, a, I mean, the Turley Bridge is what it is, right? Is it? Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's always Turley Bridge. Right? Yeah, we're not. Yeah, I, I always just call it the old bridge. Old bridge. And that's what everybody I ever talked to ever called it. Well, we call it early. Yeah. So this is the flat. So this used to be obviously my favorite spot on the river. Not so much in, in recent years. But when you're coming down, I don't know if I took a picture of it. No, I didn't put it in there. But like you're kind of just park right here. So the uh, big lounge is just off. You can kind of park on the side of the river here. There's a little pad with the sign. Just right here, you're going to break out, and then the biggest thing, the biggest mistake that I see a lot of people do here, and it happened to me a few times, is that people come out that don't go to the river and they walk right across here, or they walk right up the line, and all the fish that are coming through are right here, right up along the bank, and right here, right up along the bank. Now, there's also a tidal pool out there that uh, people go out and they fish as well. But the fl all the flats is tidal water, so you're going to want to make sure that you're looking at the looking at the tide. Uh, one uh, Holy River Marina I find has a really good uh, tide chart. So if you look at the Holy River Marina website, you can go on there and get get a good idea of what the tide will be and take every bet. But um, but yeah, you basically what you do is you come down and then you cross you cross the river right here, and then you can fish like you. Can, Work your way out and fish right up against this bank. And they, they, they just kind of pile up here. That's probably where I have most of my success on the flats, to be honest with you. And then before, used to be, well, you could go over, you go over on the other side, and then you can fish this one spot in the river that you, you can fish with your, uh, with your right hand. But um, all the way, kind of from here, all the way down. Fish bottoms. And then there's all, like, all up through, there's a couple little pockets. Like, I, early, two years ago, really early in the season, I probably hooked a fish probably about right here. I was standing up here, and I hooked one just right above where I was just fishing my way up and down. Like, it's, it's lower water there, but there is a couple of deep holes, and you'll be able to see them when you're, when you're walking up through. And the other spot on, um, on the flats that I find pretty productive as well. So if you're on the side, just walk up with a pad, they'll bring you right up, and then you'll cross the river, come over here, and then scoot across, or not you don't go across, you come up to this little stand, like this little bar right here, 
And then from here down, that's fish as well. And that's 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 a spot where a lot of people will, will go and fish the lower part of the river, but they won't go off. There used to be actually a um, there used to be an old windfall there, but I was when I went down on Sunday, that's not there anymore. But uh, it's right on Kirby. You'll see the speed check, and it's really I'll just start fishing all the way. Like the water is high right now, but like if it, it was lower, the ripples kind of start right here, and you can't fish right on down. Fish fly everywhere there, really, to be honest with you. But again, last couple of years, I haven't found this place as, as good as I did even five years ago, six years ago. So this is a picture looking down the river. So the uh, pool I was talking about. So this is. You cross the river down here, and you walk up, and then right here is going to, um, right here is going to be the beach that you're probably, if you stand right here to fish all this water. And all the way down, you can just start up here, and all the, I'm actually hoping to fish, you can run up the top here, all according to how the water is, the water is off of it. But all the way down, it's like a nice deep channel. Now, it's actually cut off here. Yeah, so that's that's me just above with a with a fish on a uh, hook right around here. Um, yeah, you can't really see, but the other spot you fish is this bank. And like I said, it's very important not to walk out on that bank because you're going to scoop the fish. And I'm after having five or six people. I'm after even having fish come up after my fly. They walk out and then and nothing. And they're like almost standing, like looking down in the pool. Whatever you do, just don't, don't do that. And the same on this spot too, because at least over here you're, you're going to be out of sight, right? And then your tidal pool is going to be out here as well. So there's a few spots of fish on the on the lower part there. And then up above where we're saying there used to be used to be a uh, a big windfall right here. But up above this is the this is the beach I was talking about. And now uh, you kind of start uh, you kind of start fishing the running probably about right here somewhere. And then all down right up along close inside. So you want to land your fly over as close as you can then. Because they're going to be right they're usually right on that right on that um, that bank there. Then in Sandy Point, I um, I don't fish Sandy Point very often. I've only fished it twice. But it, it is some people have great success there. But I um, I don't really. I, I kind of usually go up the back river and then go up to uh, to Blizzard Road really. But um, Ricky, do you know where exactly? Like people? No, I don't either. Yeah, I kind of bought that, but it, it's. The school will be up there, you know, there's a little spot where you, you can... Well, actually, Victor, you know where the fish... Uh, right on the turn. Right here, right? No. Yeah. Down there. Yeah, no. Oh, right on the right there, right down on the turn. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. And then there's a little, little, spot, huh? little spot you can uh, you can park there, uh, just off the side of the road, and you can just walk down over the, over the river. But I don't, I really just use the bypass at any point. But people, people, oh, that's a picture. Yeah, okay, that's right. So yeah, this is this is where they you fish over here on the side and the fish will have over. So what's the road? So this again is a one of my favorite spots. So you actually yeah, uh, there's a little road, let me see if I can go. Yeah, so right here. So when you're going up over the hill, just past the school, you'll see a road this goes down, it's really hard to miss. So when you when you come down, you can park here and walk down to the river. This is probably only about 100 feet or so. You walk right down to the river, when you get down to the river, there was actually, uh, there was a couple different spots actually, but essentially you, you turn off, you park here, you walk down. My favorite spot to fish um, on pointers, like standing point to be down here. My favorite spot is this long steady right here. 
with the, with the uh, boss. And uh, I haven't pulled, I might have seen two people there, I probably fished it a hundred times. And I might have only seen two people. Now, I'll, be, I'll warn you, there's a tree in the middle that probably has about a hundred of my flies in it. I always wanted to take a chainsaw down and cut down, but it's a bit of a slog. I was hoping for a beaver to cut down with these days. Just right, um, if you walk down the river, you're, you're a, you can come right down through the woods there, but it is a bit, it is a bit tangy. But I usually just uh, cross over to the island, cross here, walk down. When you get to uh, this point right here, it does get pretty, um, it does get pretty bad. So I usually, um, when you start to see the white, the white wires come across again, they get, uh, they get down here now. Fish lie right, right down this run. But again, another thing with this is that it's deep. You can't see the fish, it's really deep. But you can scoop the fish easily. So you want to stay back as far as you can. You start, um, just start fishing all the way up. Then you're going to get here where the tree is. Best spot. Try to, uh, try to uh, look over for the tree. But uh, once you get past, you can come all the way down. Then once you get, you get down, even at the back here, there's some nice fishing here for, uh, for trout action all the way down that whole city. Then if I'm taking in, if I'm taking in uh, this pool, I'll walk down to the back river, and there's a couple, uh, couple nice little spots here uh, where, the, where the back river will run out, and um, you fish, you fish, it's almost like the same thing, it's a bit of one on steady, and again, the fish are usually well closer to the bank. But that's um, that's my two go-to spots for for both as well, and um, it, it's it's probably about it's not that that far. Really, from here up, you're probably only looking at about 20 minute walk, and you're probably looking at about 10 minutes there. But if you're fishing the bottom part of the river, it, it's it's a good little spot actually to uh, to take in. Um, so this is looking down. So when you come out to the river, you're looking down. So I usually scoot across, walk down on the island, go across and walk down and across again. And this right here, you can see the snow. But when you tell, you tell when you get there, because there's a big, there's a big bank on, on your uh, left hand side, and on the other side there's a sandy beach. Now another spot that used to be really good before this rock was moved, this rock used to be able to right here, and right behind that rock used to always be a few fish when the rum was on. They used to be a nice little secret. A lot of people used to just walk by it, but um, right here was a deep, nice little deep hole. That rock was out there and uh, used to be able to always keep fish out of that as well. And there's, also, there's pockets that you can fish, like even when you're, uh, when you're going off the river to, uh, there's, there's a good few different spots. Like there's, um, I don't know what that picture is there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think that's off river though. I don't think we, you know. Oh yeah, no. Sorry. Yes, that's that's a closer picture of. Um, yeah, of that beach on top of it. So yeah, you're parking up here, and then that's your uh, that's the big line of city. So really, from from right here where the white wire starts, all the way all the way to about right here. Well, that's, that's probably the size. Butler Falls is probably my favorite spot on the river because it's usually quiet until now. Yeah. And then you're looking at the back river, so um, again, you fish. There's a couple different spots, but I, I fish kind of this way here. I usually get out on uh, either side. And fish, and you can fish over on, on the uh, on this side of the river too, but uh, back river uh, all the way up around here. And you can also get the back river. There's a path um, right across from the old school where you can. Um, it's there's a gate there where you can walk into the river. There's standing signs on the gate. Pretty pretty easy to find. Straight in there. I think it might take no trespassing, but I'm not in jail yet. And then uh, governors. So, governors um, pretty accessible for anybody that don't like to walk very far, and it holds a good few fish as well. Um, you kind of, when you're driving down to the, um, when you're driving down to the golf course, 
when you go past the the hotel, there's another road that brings you down to the new the new cabin down this way. So um, once you go, you kind of cross over the track path and it brings you down to this road. So you, you follow this down the pavement, then it turns into gravel, and then you kind of come off and turn. I want you to put a picture. Yeah. So you. Uh, Golf courses here. You drive down this way and come off, and then you uh, you park up here and you walk down right right to the river. It's probably there's no more. Probably two minutes. Mm -hmm. So here, well, again, this is only taken a couple days ago. It's not usually uh, this high, but all the way into these rock cliffs, you get fish. Fish lane. I'm, I'm off really hot, so if you do hook something here, it is it is hard to actually land a fish. Um, but you can use fly fish here. Uh, you can use fly fish here as well, like right, kind of right under you. So you're going to be off a good bit. You're going to be just fishing right underneath your toes, basically. Um, and then you can cross the river. If you when you first break out, you're going to be breaking out over here. So you, Cross down to the wrong end. And you can fish all like this is this whole fish. So you can walk up this path here and I'll bring you up to the woods. And I'll bring you up here. Now my favorite spot to fish is right here, this little space in here, and these ones over here. So you can kind of work your way out again. It's not usually uh, this high, but fish holes here, and you can get fish holes in here as well. And then like I said, now I'm on that phone. So another point, when you're when you're at Governors, um, Governors is the fastest way to walk to Pinson. If you try to walk from the highway into Pinson, it's quite a giant. Um, so when you're when you're walking off, you leave that same trail that I showed you earlier. You come up and you come out to the river, and you follow your river, follow the river up, and you're about 20 minutes walk. 25 minutes, so I could probably do it in 15. Um, and it's really easy walking. Like you probably had to cross the river a few times, but it's no pressure. Very easy to get up there, and you'll come right at the dumpy, and you can work your way up, up um, all the way up uh, Pinson. All right, any questions on the lower part of the river? The path going from Governor's up, yeah. is that on? It, it goes back and forth. Does it across the river, or from is it all primarily on one side? Going from, from governors up to Pinson's, yeah. The path is probably only about a hundred meters long. Then oh. you come out to you come out to the river, and you just follow the river all the way up. Yeah. But you're not getting lost. The hardest part is getting up around governors, to be honest with you. Anything else? All right. So we got the upper section of the river. Um, I can't stand the upper section. Nobody should fish the upper section. It's not, it's not <laughs> stick, stick down on the back, everybody here. Now, uh, that's not the upper section of the river. No, that's true. Yeah. I'll just mean for this the presentation. The river is divided into three sections. The flat, Pinson, and the upper. Yeah, okay. okay? So, that's the, the way all we want. The right? upper would be, um, I guess, from Pinson. From Pinson, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so from like a narrow top, say, yeah, that's right. But I, for this presentation, this, I've done it in two parts for before snack and after snack. <laughs> All right. I don't know if this is. I don't know if more in school is even something. <coughs> someone can correct me, but don't really care if it is or isn't. But a lot of people call it Ronnie's school. This is going to be your uh, your main school on the on uh, Then you got the Ron. So you got the you got more in school on the top. You got the Ron. You got Joe's hole. You got way goes back down below it. Then you got the corner pool, and then Dumpy will be the first one that you get to when you come up from. From uh, governors. Now, one thing that's nice about this is yes, they got a lot of uh, anglers are usually there, but there's lots of places to.
to, um, yeah? So I walked up there once, and I think of that painting, too. It was a little old, like, warden pan or sorry. Yeah, that's the first one. There's three cabins there all together. Where's that on that painting? Uh, right here is the first cabin. Okay, so most of these schools you talk about are upstream of that. Yeah, I got a picture from that cabin, actually. Uh, and that, yeah, so that's from the cabin. So that's from Stone Beach. Uh, but you can kind of see the tail end of the, the, the run is just up, up a bit further up. But like that's all uh, that's all the lower part of the, the river there actually. So let me go back. Um, so yeah, that's the main one. So when you're yeah, so like I said before, the best way to get up to this part of the river is definitely to go from from uh, Governor's. If you're walking in from the road, you're probably well, gee, I'll see you're a good hour. It took me probably 20 minutes on bike. Now I cut down a couple of windfalls on my way in, but it, it, it's it's a it's a good it's a good track because um, the river kind of turns a bit, and so do uh, so do uh, like San Bernardino comes up and it goes out. So like I'll, I'll just say you're maybe even an hour or 20 minutes to walk in from this point. But if you got an ATV, or you can get in there and truck too if you don't really. Care much about your truck if you got a Ford or something. <laughs> um, but you just park, you park here, there's a bridge that takes you right across, and um, you can go in on the ATV. If you're going in on a truck, you kind of come through here close to the river and, uh, and drive on in. Like the road's not too bad, um, but like there's a lot of there's a lot of tight spots that you would definitely scratch scratch your truck. So this is uh, Ryan's pool for it top here. Um, if I go, I don't fish pistons all that much, but I, I, I go in there because you're got you're got a good chance of getting a, a early fish. But usually they they tend to be right here. Again, the water is up a good bit, but right up alongside this bank, you can find them all through this this back water here. And like usually you can walk right out. And there's this is all dry. You can kind of probably come out to, I can't really see here where, where the rocks would be, but you, you can come out even further here and, and, uh, and stand on the rocks to, to fish down across. And then down here you can see the, the run coming out. Um, a lot of people cross the river and they fish from, from this bank over here. Again, there's another spot where you can fish it with your, uh, with your right hand, one of the rare spots on the river actually. And then, so that's from the uh, from the bottom. So right back to me now is, is the bottom cabin, and then you can fish a couple different spots all the way down through, right down the dump beach, right down in here, and then you can see this is where you're going to be coming in. So when you're walking up, a good point. When you're walking up from Governor's, don't go, don't stay on this side when you come up because you get into really really deep water right here. So you want to make sure that uh, you cross the river. Back here to get, like, I, there's, you can fish right down to the one here too, but you, uh, you cross back and then walk up on, uh, on this, on this side of the river. And there's a trail that comes right up to the cabin. And then you can come up, then there's another trail that takes you right up to, uh, Ryan's and, and the, the fast water as well, down, uh, up, up the river a bit further. Now, this is, this is my favorite. A lot of people's favorite, but Murphy's, Murphy's and Butler's. Um, I started fishing it probably about five or six years ago, and uh, this is a good fish to give you an idea where we start to walk in. Um, so you, there's a there's a little parking lot right here. So you're exactly one kilometer past the Sandler and H Park. So when you get to Sandler and H Park, one kilometer past it. And this is going to be uh, a road going into a cabin. I can't remember the guy's name, but. Yeah. yeah. And if you walk right in, his cabin is going to be over here. You're going to see this trail. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and I was talking to Sam and Eric Park this year, they're hoping that more people that are going in will be getting a park permit. So they got a new sign up. Uh, saying that they want anybody going in uh, to have a park permit. Um, and really that's just 
if anything, any missing persons or any fires, that kind of thing starts, they want to know who's in there. So they told me that um, you can go up at the beginning of the season and get a full salmon season pass. But they, they do want they do want you to get a pass. And uh, because when I walked in here, there was a new sign. Because they used to always have an old sign there saying that you need a permit. But now they got a newer sign and they, they want to try to they're, they're cleaning it up in there. They want to uh, get a better idea who's going back there. So Will it cost anything good? No, it's free. And like it's the same type of permit you get if you go into a wilderness preserve. <laughs> Anything, but they said if you got a salmon license, they'll write you one for the full season, so you don't have to get one every time you go in. But um, I have never got one before, but I'm definitely going to get one this year. So how would you how would you let them know you're going in? Is a cow or is a salmon? Uh, realistically, I think they when you're filling out, I think they got your license plate number and your vehicle, oh. and then if they know you're parked there, they know you're in there, basically, right? So. Well, I think uh, they said that their, um, the park's boundary goes right back to the river and extends right up to the wilderness reserve. So when you're fishing all that area, you're really in, you're in the zone, right? So then I had a good chat to them about uh, the blasting operations, but that's a different story. <laughs> so I got an outline here. So really, you're going to be certain here. And um, kind of walk in, so I just kind of drew this on my phone, so it's not the best trail. But you, you come in, the, there's going to be two feeds really. When you get right here, you can go out, you can walk around the pond, this is the way I usually go. But there's another path that comes up through. I'm usually really early when I go in, there's a good few carpets, so I try to stay on the pond so I'm not crushing them at least up to five feet. But you, um, that's one V, I don't have a mark down here, but you can go right across here, or you can come out to the pond, and then uh, you walk across, you walk across the big bog here, you come up with a few bad, there's a few bad spots, like this is half hard going, you get right here, it's not the best. Um, then you're coming out, and then there's going to be another V here, so when you, when you get in, actually, no, it wasn't marked. So when you get here, uh, you can either continue going right down the Balkers. That's going to be about 40, 45 minutes. It took me about 33 minutes when I was, I was telling myself. It took me 33 minutes to get in there, but everything was frozen. I was walking over what I'm usually up to my knees in. So um, give yourself about 40, 45 minutes to walk in the Balkers. And then there's another trail that's going to bring you right off the Murphy's. And again, you can cut across there's another trail that's going to bring you in. Uh, trail of Murphy's, and uh, you're probably about 15 minutes or so walk up to uh, up to Murphy's. Then, when you come out, Chris's cabin is going to be right here, and then the Romney's cabin is off the over right here somewhere. So there's going to be two cabins in there as well. So you, the first one you see will be Rick's cabin as soon as you come out to uh, the Bowers. Is it three lines here? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, and uh, okay. <laughs> when you finish the signing, it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Good job, Ty. And it came out to work yet. No, it didn't. First of all, I was like, geez, man, it's a good job. I thought they took that cabin, the worst cabin, they took it out two years ago on the chopper. Yeah. They didn't see it, right? Yeah, yeah. And you got all the uh, all the sliding out the deadly. Now, you see, you can paint the front part of it white. Spend it all in. All right, so now this is my favorite spot. Not here, actually. This is not this is my favorite spot. So this is uh, this is Bulkers. Again, all this water right here holds fish. If you're getting fish really almost right into the shore here, right across, these fish are really hard to spot. But um, you get them, you have to hold up here, you hold all the way right down, down. You get them. There's another rock. Over around here, they're, they're in front of the, on the back of it, on the side of the rock. Uh, but the thing about this, you, you can see the fish basically everywhere here. So it's uh, it's easy to pick them out. But again, if you can see a fish, they can see you. So you gotta kind of a lot of people just come right here, stick right here, and cast down over the top of them. I usually try to get up here, so you're not in sight, <coughs> and cast down 
with my right hand. <coughs> Actually, up here, these ones here I'll find the fly really well. I'm going to fall, catch them up over them, and then um, let it float down over the top of them until I float down. These ones over here are uh, nice on a uh, wet fly. And like I said, these fish right all the corners of the water, like the fish all, all everything, they're everywhere basically. And um, then another good spot, this is my favorite spot right here, the pulpit. I like being able to see the fish in this river. We fish all this rig, I fish up here. I find, I didn't find some nice big fish up in this back spot of there. And you come down and I don't know if I'm going to have a picture. Yeah, so I've got a picture here on ten right on the pulpit. And here you'll find them, well you find them all over the place, but on uh, uh, normal water conditions, you'll see the fish here generally in this area. And, um, yeah, you can get them right back, right to the grip there, really. And, they're almost like they, they line up, like you get like four, and you get six, or you get probably even three or four different lines of fish. Oh, of course, obviously, how many fish are in the, in the river, but usually when, when, uh, when they're pushing up through, you get a good few fish there in that, in that one area. And that's enough. And that, that's me right there in the pulp a couple of years ago when they had uh, the pulp and tag, but that's, uh, that's the fish from the pulp. And then I'm using that small blue pad. This small slide. That's me with fish on there, standing at the pulpit. That's a nice, that was a big fish that I looked at that day. That was a jump. That was actually a video. I can show you the video after, but that's, I couldn't get a video into the, into the uh, uh, Photoshop. But um, I lost some right down the jump. <laughs> looking back down. Now, so you're looking down, you're, you can fish all this water, but. Um, No, I'm going to leave that spot out. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you, you'll go down a bit further and you'll come into the, the basin. But there's another really good little run there, secret run that you can poke around for on yourself. It's kind of hard to get to, but I tell you, it's, it's, it's worth it. It's, it's a good spot. And then you can't really see the basin, but the basin is, I mean, once you get down here in this white water, there's another spot around this area. And it's like a, it's like almost like a small whirlpool. You're gonna have a chance of, if you if you get there, if you, you have a few flicks, if you don't have anything, just follow the leave, it's not in it. But that's a that's a worthwhile spot to the the fish. But there is a couple a couple of little spots there that I'll just show you the main pool. But um, there's a couple of good spots there to uh, to explore. Um, so yeah, then it brings you up to uh, to Murphy's. Uh, so Murphy's, this is the panoramic. So you got up right underneath the fall, we're up in the in the uh, water. I find up here on higher water, they kind of tend to push in right tight. So you kind of fish them right close to the bank over here. I don't know. I might have a better picture here after. So you got the uh, we're up at the flood fall. It's just fast water. Then uh, Pierce's pool is kind of like out here in the in the middle, but well, it's another another ride that you can fit there. Then it's Murphy's Run, and you go to Mokers and you fish right down through Mokers. Lots of little tiny holes, especially when the run didn't place the pool there. And Matthew's Pond is right at the right at the bottom. So this is this is I took this picture standing up on top of the falls. So like I was saying, in high water you get you get fish right in tight. Right in here, all throughout. Then you get into uh, you get into the fast water, and uh, fast water comes out and then goes into the run. The run goes all the way down. But all throughout here, there's a, there's a rock, there's a rock over right here somewhere, and the fish are all all around the rock. You'll be able to see it when the water is lower, and you'll be able to walk right out really because when the water drops, it's all sheltered. So you'll be able to walk out and fish the fish the uh, river lots. Uh, a lot easier because when, if the water is up, right behind you here, there's trees, so you're roll passing, hard to get a line out. So um, it's better to fish it when uh, it drops off the pond, it's more easy to get out further.
Then there's a good, good picture here of uh, motors in the run. So down here, uh, when I usually fish the run, like, I usually stand on this rock here. And you can kind of fish all this. Rock slide up here, up on good. Small, uh, small balls. Then you can fish with another rock. There's another rock that over right here somewhere. And you can get them on in front of the rock and back of the rock. Bring it on down. All that cool. Pull a fish, and then you get down to uh, mofers. And mofers all right down the magic pond. If it's a fishery, there's holes there everywhere, and you can you can see where the fish are lying. It's pretty pretty easy, and it can hold a whole lot of people. As you can see, you can pick your way out down all these little rips to hold fish up here. Now I'm sitting on top of the rock there on the side, where a lot of people fish from this rock. Some people fish. So few people go across, and like Tommy Mercer, I don't know Tommy can fish over on the other side. He crosses and fits all the way down through, right to where it breaks out to the pond here, and you can get it. Uh, you can fish right down in a few spots down the river if you're really ambitious and you want to walk down through. But really, it's 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 easy spot to to fish. People in their best time. Like I, I find you go into Vincent's. Nobody really wants to talk to you, but up there, now I've been treated like all the people who show me, here, try this, or come up and take my spot. That, that's what I like about this section of the river. It's, it's a different type of sports from there, and that's what I appreciate about, about Murphy's and, and Bullets. And people keep it clean, that's one thing. I walked into, I walked into Vincent's, and I took out two bags of garbage. I walked in here, I, couldn't, I found one Gatorade bottle. They're probably washed down from up and top. People, people keep it clean. People appreciate it, and I find that people pick up the garbage. And that's one thing. When I'm on a river, I can't stand seeing garbage around. So, pick it up. I'll catch you. Three and four. Now, up above. So we got mech hats. So, mech hats. Mech hats. So this is salmon waters. Mechass is right here, runs into Mechass Pond. And then this is, to give you a perspective of where it is, so this is, this is Salmon Waters, Mechass, right here, then this is Murphy's. So, a couple different ways that you can get in there. You can walk in from the Salmon Air Line, just about a whiskey pit there, there's a AV, or ATV trail. But that ATV trail, you can't get all the way in because you're going to be going on to um, you're going to be going on to the Samir Nature Park land, and you you can't get in there. Now it is a reservoir trail, but the best way is to walk it because I think it, like there's sections of it. You have to look at the map. There's sections of it you can't go in on ATV. So it's about an hour and a half walk into all the way in, so you get up to here. Uh, you can also walk from Murphy's, but I wouldn't recommend it. I, I did have somebody tell me that you, he walks, he would fish all the way to Murphy's and then walk off to uh, Metcalf. It's about an hour run, but I know, I'm not sure what way you go when you come in. Um, I know this is very hilly, so I guess he kind of picks his way up through and, and crosses the river. But I wouldn't recommend walking from Murphy's. Uh, if, if you tend to go in, if you, if you want to go in there, but it, it is possible. Then the falls is located right off, so the falls is almost like right here on the sand water. And it's supposed to be beautiful. I don't know how many of you guys were in here, but like it's, it's almost, some people call it like the big falls of, of the Adelaide. Like when you're looking, it's almost like the pond is up above you, and it's just like ripping <coughs> down over the uh, over the pond. It, it's a gorgeous sight to see, but you can fish from the falls down 23 meters. They have it. It's approximately about right here where it ends, but all this area here is close to uh, close fishing. So on the salmon area, that's one thing to keep in mind. There is signs there if they're not ripped down, but. Um, but uh, that's one thing to keep in mind, that if you're going off, you can't fish from 23 meters down there from the, uh, from the falls. 
And like I said, off in the top there, it's, um, it's really good in this late season. Like it's it's, uh, it's a good way to get off the rivers. Because once you get into this, you're getting salmon water, then you're getting up into the hip waters. Um, and then when you're coming down, all the way down through is mostly pocket fishing. So it's like little small, little small pockets. And it's, it's, and it's, I know right back here is, is big, tall trees, so it's not a lot of back casting. You gotta do more roll casting and fish a short line. But it's, it's supposed to be, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, it's really good fishing here. But on high water, obviously, it's not the best because, um, the balls kind of, I know usually when you get a good rain, the day about two or three days after until it usually starts to settle down, you fish way out, way out to the pond. And like I said, the trees on each side of the river, which uh, makes it uh, hard to fish up there, but a lot of people have great success there. And then to give you an idea, so this right here will be a little bit, the trail kind of comes goes in across here. You can see Long Hot Road in the uh, nature park. I think the nature park is about 1,400 <coughs> hectares, so it, it's right, nature park is here, but 1,400 hectares is, is a big space, so you don't go, you don't want to be going over any uh, protected land there. So you, you walk in, and then uh, right here is where the, uh, where the falls is, and then to give you another perspective, this is where uh, Murphy is. So, like you say, it's, it's, it's about an hour, hour walk into uh, Manhattan, so about an hour and a half to get in uh, from the highway. Here we go. And that's really everything that I know on the Salmon River. Any more questions? What's a whiskey pit? Whiskey pit is like, uh, it's an area... I'm assuming it's, it's, it's nice to fit. No. Uh, no, not, I don't think anymore. Whiskey Pit used to be a spot where there used to be a, off, a bunch of cabins there. I meant to take a picture, to be honest with you, I meant to take a picture when I was coming back up. The shoulders, there used to be cameras here, but now they've got a trailer park. I don't know, it's before my time. Yeah, like, um, like it's, it's probably about, um, Maybe a kilometer before you get, no, probably one kilometer than that. Probably two kilometers before you get to uh, San Marino's Park. Like it'd be yeah. a whiskey pit, then there'd be like a diner there, mm -hmm. uh, fired up as well, and then it's the San Marino's yeah. Park. It's like it's not, it's not that seconds after I was to go in the Yeah. But it used to be, a, it used to be a bunch of trailers, and now it's, um, yeah, there's a park, there's a park put there now. And then as soon as you pass that, you'll see a big sign that says Richard AV, AV, or ATV Trail. And that's the trail right there that goes into the river. But like I said, I, I wouldn't suggest anybody taking the ATV in there because I, I don't know. That's sort of the actual problem. They're going to hit the Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is a bit of, a, bit of a walk. Yeah? Chris, but, uh, what's your estimate of the size of the rug? I, I wouldn't be able to really, I, I, don't, I wouldn't like to guess that, but I'm after hearing people before say around 4,000 fish. Rick, what do you think? Well, some years, absolutely. Yeah, 5,000? Sam and Air got a good run of fish. There's, there's, there's 20 times in the headwaters, and yeah. it's all in the wilderness area in the nature park, so yeah. that's what protected it over the years. And, and it's, a hard, it's a hard river to fish, too. That's what that's protecting it, right? So I, I was I, my guess, if I had to guess, would probably be around four forty five. That would be my guess for the size of mine. It's a, it's a it's a it's a nice little river. Yeah. Yeah, I would say you can come from the whole sea and portage right down probably to it. That's as far as we get. Yeah, you're not getting, yeah, because it's thick on both sides. You're not, you're not getting the, 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 you're not getting the,
right away from the top. Everyone really should see what the jersey is saying. How long did that line come from under the uh, Jerry, I'm glad I got my way out of San Mary River, because that mining company is going to ruin the river. Yeah, it's going to make access I'm so right. easy to all the headwaters. It's going yeah, to be no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at the actual maps, now I've, I've sent a few emails out, but if you look at the maps of their, their drilling rights, it yeah. does infringe on both the nature park and the wilderness area. Yeah. But the emails that I got back was that when they're when they're given out the licenses, they got to they, they all come in blocks. So when I'm looking at it, I see the different blocks. They say, no, there's no drilling going to be going to happening on the Roman Preserve, but uh, uh, who knows? I but, have agree with 500 meters. Yeah, like, and, and again, I, have, I still have been talking back and forth, but they said that there's no drilling going to be happening or no road going to be going on any of the Roman Preserve or the Tamara Nature Park. Now, Tamara Nature Park is worried about Blasting that kind of thing for the animals. Absolutely. And the fish. <coughs> and the fish. Have you invited any of the vibrations? What? Have you invited any of No. Uh, that's what I don't know. I don't, maybe for a road they might have been, but I don't think they've been doing any like, core sampling yet. You won't find no climb diving. Yeah. For gold. Perfect. <coughs> <coughs> okay, thank you very much, folks. It's the groups like ourselves that, uh, you know, there's a bit of education, a bit of uh, angling, a bit of a lot of conservation.